ਦੇ ਇਨ ਅਵਤਾਰ ਮਹਿਰ ਬਾਬਾ ਕੀ ਜੈ ਅਵਤਾਰ ਮਹਿਰ ਬਾਬਾ ਕੀ ਜੈ ਅਵਤਾਰ ਮਹਿਰ ਬਾਬਾ ਕੀ ਜੈ ਗ੍ਰੇਟ ਥੈਂਕਸ ਆਈ ਐਨਵੀ ਯੂ ਫॉर ਥਿਸ ਯੋਰ ਸਕਿਲ ਜੈ ਬਾਬਾ so we'll start today we'll be reading message number 5 and this message message at the nick poker hotel given by shri mehbaba at a general reception in his honor hollywood may 31 1932 yeah thank you so much beti uh, and diana since arriving in america i have been asked many times what solution i brought for the social problems now confronting you what did i have to offer that would solve the problems of unemployment prohibition crime that would eliminate the strife between individuals and nations and pour healing balm of peace upon a troubled world so these were the questions raised to baba and as usual baba's answer was love is the remedy for all so baba answers the answer has been so simple that it has been difficult to grasp i will elaborate it now in order that it may be more easily understood the root of all our difficulties individual and social is self interest it is this for example which causes corruptible politicians to accept bribes and betray the interests of those whom they have been elected to serve which causes bottle gears to break for their own profit a low desire sorry a law designed whether wisely or not to help the nation as a whole which causes people to convey for their own pleasure in the breaking of that law thus causing disrespect for law in general and increasing crime tremendously which causes the exploitation of great masses of humanity by individuals or groups of individuals seeking personal gain which impedes the progress of civilization by solving inventions which would contribute to the welfare of humanity at large simply because their use would mean the scrapping of present inferior equipment which when people are starving causes the wanton destruction of large quantities of food simply in order to maintain market prices which causes the hoarding of large sums of gold when the welfare of the world demands a circulation he is the master of all economics also he is telling here so volume of gold is wonderful and the only cause in simple word is selfishness selfishness the self interest or selfishness is the only cause behind all this yeah. so when we we are selflessness so selflessness will be the answer for all such causes as further baba says there are only a few examples of the way self interest operates to the detriment of human welfare eliminate self interest and you will solve all your problems individual and social eliminate the self interest be selflessness not the selfish and that's the remedy but the elimination of self interest we are on page number 16 but the elimination of self interest even granting a sincere desire on the part of the individuals to accomplish it is not so easy and is never completely achieved except by the aid of a perfect master who has the power 
to convey truth at will. For our self-interest springs from a false idea of the true nature of the self. And this idea must be eradicated and the truth experienced before the elimination of self-interest is possible. So beautifully, Baba has explained here in so few words and to the point how to eradicate self-interest. He knows it's not easy. So he says only with the help of the perfect master, we can eradicate it. And where from self-interest comes from false idea. What is false idea? Ignorance. What is ignorance and false idea? We take ourselves, we are different from each other. We are this body. These are the false ideas. And those false ideas can be eradicated only with the help of the perfect master. But still, till then, in this world, we can have high aim and we can try on our own. We can try at our level how to be not selfish. I intend when I speak to reveal the one supreme self which is in all. This accomplished the idea of the self as a limited, separate entity will disappear and with it will vanish self-interest. We are not what we think ourselves are. And we have to know our true self, that is our Godhood. So this limited self has to be disappeared. Cooperation will replace competition. There should be cooperation within us, amongst us, and we have to avoid competition. Certainty will replace fear. We should be certain. If we dedicate everything to him, there won't be any fear. If we are successful to think that we all are one and we are not different, then there won't be any fear. Then there won't be any competition. The principle of oneness is the remedy for this. So certainty will replace fear. Generosity will replace greed. These are all the remedies till we achieve that God. oneness, -ness. till we achieve that God realization, till we get the grace of the perfect master. These are the worldly remedies to be generous. Exploitation will disappear. Now, para number third, it has been asked why I have remained silent for seven years, communicating only by means of an alphabet word, and why I intend to break my silence shortly. And it might be asked in view of what had just been stated, what relation my speaking will have to the transformation of human consciousness, which has been predicted. Now, Baba's answer is very beautiful. Humanity as at present constituted uses three vehicles for the expression of thought and experiences three states of consciousness. These three vehicles are the mental body in which thoughts arise as the result of impressions from past experiences, these thoughts may remain latent in the mental body as seeds or they may be expressed. If they are expressed, they take first the form of desire and pass first through second expression, second vehicle, the subtle or the desire body which is composed of the five physical senses, 
they may rest there here as in the case of dreams or unfulfilled desire or they may be further expressed in action through third vehicle, the physical body with five physical senses. Baba explains here the whole journey of thoughts, desires, and impressions, how it happens. Baba, in reply to his observing silence, is explaining three vehicles of expression of thought, how the impressions are formed, what type of impressions in creation and causes also Baba has explained it very beautifully. Here Baba explains three bodies. This body is constituted with the three bodies. That is gross body which we see, subtle body and third is mental body. So whatever we have done in past, it creates the impressions. Those impressions are, we can say, stamped, formed, and stored in our mental body. But all the impressions are not active. Many of these impressions are dead, or half dead, or subconscious. These impressions which are lying in the mental body, when come on the surface, they come enter into the subtle body and they form the in the form of thoughts, thinking process. So Baba says, whenever any thought comes to your mind, if we don't bring it, if we don't implement on it, if we don't act on it, if we don't speak it or we don't act it, it remains just a thought. So when the impressions are in the form of thoughts, these impressions are feeble and easy to eradicate. But if that thought, suppose someone wish to kill someone or murder someone, if it is a thought, and he do not act on it, the impressions are subtle and can be eradicated easily. But if he acts on that thought, and if he really goes and murders someone, that act creates a very dark impressions we are, which are not easy to eradicate. And if the thoughts are of like violence, self-interest and lust and greed. The sanskaras will be of the color, dark color, red color. Baba has even explained the colors of sanskaras. If the good thoughts and only in the form of thoughts, those impressions will be of the blue color. If the impressions, the thoughts are, uh, as we just now explained, like murder, doing murder of someone, and lust and greed, the, sun, the color will be dark color. And when it comes in actions, it will be still difficult. So when it comes in action, when we one implements on the thoughts, action is done, third vehicle is gross body. This is the third vehicle through which these impressions are worked out. Those are spent as at the same time, new impressions are also formed. Regarding the dreams, some impressions are like half dead or half subconscious. So when we sleep and we see a dream, we have a dream. What are these dreams? Where from they come? These dreams come out of these half-conscious 
impressions which are half dead they come on surface and these impressions are spent by our subconscious mind our subtle body subtle body there this second vehicle comes in the picture and when these impressions are spent by our subtle mind subtle, subtle sorry subtle body these are dreams so in the dream we are spending impressions but we are not accumulating new impressions in the dream we do not accumulate new impressions why so because in dream we do not use third vehicle that is gross body we in the dream we do not use our third vehicle we are sleeping and we are not using gross body or gross any medium so new sanskaras are not form in dream suppose in dream if you see that you are murdering someone still no sanskaras will be formed no impressions will be formed because it is only through the already mm. impressions are there and only through the subtle body and gross body and gross word is not used there so only through the gross body impressions are formed i hope i have not made it very complicated <laughs> so baba <laughs> is <laughs> explaining about these three vehicles that is gross body subtle body and mental body then baba says the three states acha um beauty you have beautiful voice and you read very beautifully if you don't mind can you read the remaining page here we are on the last para on the page 16 the three states yeah thank you sure okay <laughs> the three states of consciousness corresponding to the three vehicles mentioned above are one unconsciousness as in deep dreamless sleep two subconsciousness as in dreams or obscure unformed and unfilled desires and three waking consciousness as in active daily life the process by which thought passes from the mental through the subtle into physical expression may be called the expression of human will <clears throat> and we go to part 1 in order that thought may be expressed effectively all three of the vehicles used in its expression must be perfectly clear and the interaction between them must be harmonious the head and the heart must be united intellect and feeling must be balanced material expression must be understood to be the fruit of spiritual realization the god man neither thinks nor desires through him the divine will flows inevitably to into perfect manifestation passing directly from the spiritual body which in the ordinary human being is undeveloped into physical expression for him the superconscious is the normal state of consciousness from him there flows continuously infinite love and wisdom infinite joy and peace and power very important yeah yeah please continue okay acha it's it's being recorded we i we forgot i have forgotten oh <laughs> okay <laughs> yes we're recording okay okay thank you thank you okay in order to convey thought to others man uses speech or writing or some other physical means of expression or in some cases as in telepathy thought <laughs> is transmitted and received through and by the subtle body the god man does not convey thought but truth which he either awakens in the individual whom he is helping through deep inner experience 
or which he transmits directly from the superconscious to the conscious, from the spiritual to the physical, by means of either the physical eye, the physical touch, or the spoken word. When he speaks, truth is more powerfully manifested than when he uses either sight or touch to convey it. For that reason, avatars usually observe a period of silence lasting for several years, breaking it to speak only when they wish to manifest the truth to the entire universe. So when I speak, I shall manifest the divine will and a worldwide transformation of consciousness will take place. Thank you. So beautiful. <clears throat> so Baba's, Baba had started this with the why he has observed the silence and he has given a reply. What is the thought process? How we speak? How we act? What are the three vehicles? Gross body, mental body, subtle body. And what is the thought process? He explained first. Because he is speaking to the Westerners who are very intelligent and they go by the intellectual convictions. So he has explained the whole process and he has not forgotten to explain that God has no desire. God man has no desires, no thoughts. And when he wants to convey anything, it can be just through touch or through eye contact. And we are hearing so many Baba stories regarding this. How Baba, whoever has taken Baba's darshan physically, they all never felt that he was silent. His silence was so talkative. Through his silence, he has, his silence was his word. Through his silence, he has conveyed so many things. The whole one life is not sufficient even to understand and implement on the literature he has given while in silence. So in his physical meetings also, very important point he has uh, in the end that when he speaks, truth is more powerfully manifested when he uses either sight or touch. Even then, more than his speech, his touch, his eye contact is more important. So were the sahavas. So Baba used to tell in his sahavas to take maximum from him, maximum of him. Because these things we cannot see, we cannot feel, we cannot explain. This cannot be explained through thoughts or intellectual conviction. No, these are beyond the intellect. What we get if we go down to Samadhi, we get a lot as per our capacity. But it cannot be explained. It cannot be seen. It cannot be felt. It cannot be touched. As we breathe in, we take oxygen or air, whatever. Can we see it? Can we feel it? Not at all. In the same way, just his glance, my father's first meeting with Baba, just through his eyes, he had changed him totally. So there are so many incidents through his touch, through his sabas, whatever he was giving. So words and language and speech was not necessary there. And in every altar period, he observes silence for the benefit of all, he says. And if anyone wants to discuss further, fine. Or uh, we can go to the next uh, message. <clears throat> uh, that message number six on page number 18. Anyone want to, I would like to hear if anyone want to share or someone want to ask something. Baba has also explained that his will is a divine will. His mind is a universal mind. All those things. Silence. 
all the lovers of silence ma silent master so we'll move to page number 18 message number six message at pickpear house given by sri mehbaba at a reception at the residence of douglas fairbanks and mary pickford beverly hills hollywood june 1st 1932 and in this message, in the end, we are going to see a very important message from Baba on love. That's unique. That's very nice one. We'll see to it. Uh, anyone who wish to read? Shall I continue? Uh, my voice is not so nice. <laughs> it is. It's lovely. Yeah. Jai Baba. Uh, yeah, please, Marika. Yeah, please. Barsha, um, messages at Pick, Pick Fair House given by Sri Mir Baba at a reception at the residence of Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford, Beverly Hills, Hollywood, June 1st, 1932. <clears throat> I was particularly glad to come to California because of the opportunity which is afforded to contact those who made or appeared in the moving pictures. And I'm delighted that this gathering could be arranged for tonight. I do not need to tell you who are engaged in the production and distribution of moving pictures, what a power you hold in your hands, nor do, you, nor do I doubt that you are fully alive to the responsibility which the welding of that power involves. He who stimulates the imagination of the masses can move them in any direction he chooses. And there is no pow more powerful instrument for stimulating their imagination than the moving pictures. People go to the theater to be entertained. If the play is strong, they come away transformed. They surrender their hearts and minds to the author, producer, director, stars, and they follow the example which they are portrayed, which they see portrayed before their eyes more than they themselves realize. Both the press and radio influence thought, but both lack the power of visible example, which is the greatest stimulant to action in which the moving pictures offer better now than any other medium. We find ourselves today in the midst of a worldwide depression, which affects everyone, rich and poor alike, and from which all are groping blindly for deliverance. The film companies, the picture theaters, and the stars have also suffered from it. If they could help to end the depression, I'm sure they would be glad to. How could the moving pictures help in this respect? First, it must be understood that the depression is not an accident, nor is it purely the result of overproduction and inflation. Those, although the immediate causes are merely the instructions which were used to bring the depression about. The depression itself was caused by those entrusted with the evolution of humanity. Man has to be stripped of his material possessions in order that he may realize through actual experience that his true base is spiritual and not material. Then he will be ready to receive the truth which I have come to bring. This truth consists in the knowledge that man, instead of being a limited separate individual, completely bound by the illusion of time and space and substance, is eternal in his nature and infinite in his resources. The world illusion is a dream of his imagining, the play enacted in the theater of his consciousness, a comedy of which he is at once author, producer, director, star. But this absorption, absorption in the role which he has chosen to enact has made him forgetful of his true self. And he stumbles now as creature through the part he has created. He must be awakened to his true nature. He must see that all material expression depends upon and flows from spiritual being. Then he will be steadfast 
and serene under all circumstances. There will be no further need then for the depression and it will disappear. Now, how can the moving pictures help man to attain this realization? The character of the pictures exhibited need not be changed. Love, romance, adventure are fundamental things. They should be portrayed as thrillingly, as entertainingly, as inspiringly as possible. The wider the appeal, the better. What needs to be changed is the emphasis or stress. For example, courage is a great virtue, but it may, if misapplied, become a vice. So it is with love, the mainspring of our lives, which may lead to the height of realization or to the depths of despair. No better example can be given of the two polarities of love and the effects than that of Mary Magdalene before and after meeting Jesus. Between these two extremes are many kinds of love, all which are good, but some which are better than others. I use the term good and better simply to designate the degrees of liberation which they lead to or confer. Even the love which expresses through physical desire is good to the extent that it frees one from the thraldom of personal likes and dislikes and makes one want to serve the beloved all other things, above all other things. Every human relationship is based on love in one form or another and endures or dissolves as that love is eternal or temporal in character. Marriage, for example, is happy or unhappy, exalting or degrading, lasting or fleeting, according to the love which inspires and sustains it. Marriage is based on sex. Attraction alone cannot endure. They lead inevitably to divorce or worse. Marriages, on the other hand, which are based on a mutual desire to serve and inspire, grow continually in richness and in beauty and are a benediction to all who know them. Do you want to stop if anybody wants to speak or should I continue? Yeah, we will speak something what we have so far read better so that we can remember it. About yeah. the film, yeah, about the film word Baba has told. So superb analysis Baba has done. That film word, film word has a tremendous capacity of impressing others. And I don't know about West, but here in India, there was a period when masses used to be so crazy after copying the living style and hairstyle and the attire. This is what Baba has analyzed and Baba had made an appeal to the film world that you have tremendous power to impress upon. So these powers, film word should utilize for spiritual benefits. And they should not use these powers for just money making or just for fame or name. Because they can strongly, these words are, they uh, effect their hearts and the, they surrender their hearts and minds to the author, producer, director, stars, and they follow the example. So such a strong transformation film word can bring into them. And that's why Baba had made an appeal to utilize it for the spiritual benefits. If it, if it, it is analyzed towards the spiritualism, the best. So films can be used for the spiritual benefits of all. That is the strong point here, Baba. Have, uh, there is a special full message of Baba given to, I think, Hollywood uh, for this um, channelizing the, their strength for the spiritual benefits. And uh, this is another second important point here was 
Baba is also talking about the economics so nicely, why the depression is there, what for it is. And Baba has also mentioned man has to be strived of his material possessions in order that he may realize through actual experience that his true base is spiritual and not material. I think this was the most bold statement during the pre period of recession there to say in front of all only as God can do. Mm -hmm. And this, then he will be ready to receive the truth which I have come to bring. If we just go on <laughs> engage ourselves in the materialistic things and materialistic world, we, we cannot achieve the spiritual path and the final aim of God realization. So Baba has always emphasized to turn our back toward materialism and we have to face God. For that in Tiffin lecture, Baba has given, a, Baba has, as we do the experiments in the lab, science. So Baba had done one uh, small experience through that uh, experiment. Baba is trying to teach and tell to the mandali. They were all sitting in one room in Mehrabad. And there were, in India, there will be hangers like wooden hangers stuck in the wall. So few clothes were there hanging. Everyone was sitting in a, a room. And there were three steps or five steps to the room. And uh, Baba said, Baba asked everyone to come out of the room. First, from the room, Baba asked everyone, what do you see out of the room? So they say, we see the door. Then they say, we see the shoes, they are lying. Then they, Baba said, see far. And they said, yeah, outside we see the ground and we see the tree and all that. So they all came out. And Baba said, what do you see now? So they all told whatever they are seeing. So Baba says, always man is like this. He is faced towards the materialism, towards the gross word. And his back is towards God. So he don't see God. So you come out of the room. Everyone came out of the room. And then Baba Baba says, now your back is towards the room. You Do you see the room? No. So when your back is towards God, means our minds are not attracted towards God, but we are engaged so much in the materialism and gross world. So Baba says, now turn your faces. And everyone sees, now what do you see, Baba asks. So they say, we are seeing the room. So Baba says, this is the turning point. You have to turn your back towards the materialism, towards the world, and your face to God. You have to see God face to face. You should be attracted towards God. You should be aloof towards the materialism. And then he says, there were the steps. So they climbed down the steps, and there was the threshold. And Baba says the importance of threshold there. He says, threshold is the place of the perfect master who is aware, conscious of the materialistic world outside and also the inside, the divine and all the spiritual matters and secrets he knows and sees. So you have to be careful of the threshold that Sadhguru, perfect master, is sitting there to help you come in the spirituality and face towards God and see God and attain God realization. And those clothes hanging on the wall, he also told those about those three uh, clothes also. It's a big lecture, a beautiful lecture in Tiffin lecture. So anyway, coming back to this point. So he says that we have to be ready to receive the truth if we are more in materialistic world. That's why he says when he wants to prompt someone towards spirituality, he takes away all the material things. So if there was recession and all that at that time, maybe in a way, indirectly, Baba says it was for the benefit of the world so that the world can 
be thirsty. He, the word can cry for the help of the God and they can understand the importance of the God. Then there was second para that it was very important. The word illusion is a dream of his imaging. This word, which we, uh, this truth consists, that para starts with this truth consists in knowledge. No, not this one, between, this is page number 19, every human. Oh, okay. This truth, the para starts, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this truth consists knowledge that man, instead of being a limited, separate individual, completely bound by the illusion time and space, eternal in his nature. And so we are not limited. The word illusion is a dream of his imaging. So this word is not a truth. But as we dream in dream, so this word and every one of us we are, this word is a dream of God. This is what Baba says here. This word is his dream. And we all are none but God only playing all these roles. Like we are playing the role of Diana, Betty, Masia, mm -hmm. like this. Wow. We are playing the role. So we are not Marika, Jiana, Betty, Meher, Kripa. No, we are God. So God himself plays the roles. See how when we sleep, we see the dream. What is that dream? It might be any dream. Suppose a tiger comes and eats me and I am riding on horse or I am going to a garden and people, mob of people come and beat me. Any, anything can happen in our dreams, good or bad. But whether those things are there, actually, no. Who see the dream? We see the dream. So we are only playing all the roles we see in our dream, whether of a king, whether of a warrior, whether it is a tiger, whether it is a mob, everything is we only. Suppose I am seeing this dream. I am only the king. I am only the horse. I am only the horse rider. I am only the tiger. Whatever it is I am seeing, I only play that role. Nothing is real. When I wake up, everything goes, vanishes. So if this world is God's dream, all our role are played by him. He is only, the God is only Betty, God is only Diana, and he is only playing all the roles we are doing in this world. <clears throat> so when we get up, our ignorance goes, goes when we wake up to, towards the truth, we will realize, oh, this was only dream. I was God, I am God, I will be God. That is realization, that is God realization. As we wake up from the our sleep and whatever bad or good dream, and when we wake up, we feel, oh, it was just a dream. We feel that. So same way, when the truth is realized, we feel, oh, all this journey was just a dream. Why I was worried about these things so much or happy for so much? I was God. I am God and I will be God. It was just a dream. So that's why Baba has engraved on his samadhi. I have come not to teach but to awaken. He wants each and every one of us and all of us to awake from this dream for this ignorance from this sleep, what we are seeing. He wants us to awake. He came to awake us from this dream and to know our real self as we really are. So that was the important point here. He says it is a 
dream of his means God imagining and he plays enacted in the theater of his consciousness whether comedy, one's author, producer, everything, the producer. Who is the producer of this creation? God is the uh -huh. producer. He is the producer. He is the director. Everything happens as he is directing at his will. That's why Baba says, whatever happens is my wish. Accept it happily. Because this is a show. And he is doing it. He is directing it. And everything happens as he has directed, as he has planned this show. So, but the absorption in the role which he had chosen to enact has made him forgetful of his true self. So, God is only seeing the dream, God is only playing the role, but he is absorbed in that role so much so, he feels, oh, I'm here, Krupa, I'm sitting here, I'm doing this, I'm reading. No, he has forgotten self. And that he has come to help us to awake from this state. This is what he has said. Then the third uh, paragraph, after that, the uh, second, now how, here it starts. Now, very, very important. Now, how can the moving pictures help man to attain to his realization? The character of the pictures exhibition would not be changed. So what is to be changed? Why so? Love, romance, adventure are fundamental things. Baba says, whatever we are doing in this. So this life, is it totally useless? Baba gives the answer in this paragraph. No. That also, in a way, helpful. Why so? By experiencing these things, whatever it is, love, romance, adventures, sadness, happiness, we are spending our impressions and by sending our impressions that helps for further development of our consciousness to make that consciousness transform from human consciousness to divine consciousness and to achieve our real self and achieve God realization. So this life and experiences are also useful. Then Baba starts telling about the love. He miss this, what needs to be changed what needs to be changed is misapplication. It should not be misapplied. What needs? Yeah, what needs? But it may be if misapplied become a vice. For example, courage is a great vice. Good thing. But if it is misapplied, it is a vice. So what is actually in God? There is nothing good or bad. True or false. Because good or bad, true or false, are all these are the aspects of duality. But God is non-dual. He is beyond comparison. So there is nothing like good or bad, vice or virtue, right or wrong. Nothing is there. But till that status is achieved, we have to apply all these things and do only good deeds, good words, and good thoughts till that status is achieved, till the realization, till we go to the lead to the heights of the realization, till we go to the heights of the real, till we achieve that God realization. We have to see what is good, what is bad, and do accordingly. And Baba has given the two opposites like South Pole and North Pole, two opposites. Baba has given example of Mary Magdalene. You people might be knowing very well the character in the life of the Jesus. So this um, message, I use the terms good and better simply to designate the degrees of liberation. Baba also says, a very important thing, the marriage. Oh, yeah, marriage. That is page number 20. Every human relationship, the para starts with every human relationship. Yeah. 
See, so beautifully he has explained. Maybe it was very much necessary at that time in the West. Maybe this time also. Now in East also, divorces and all that happens quite a lot. Baba says how we, we have, there are so many nice messages on the married life by Baba in discourses. How we can use the married life for the spiritual benefit by doing the selfless service, sacrifice, selfless love. These are the lessons we get from the married life. So married life as it is seen in today's world, now by all, whether he has done good for me or not, if he wishes me, if he gives me, if he has gifted me, then I will think. So there should not be any expectations. It should be a selfless job. And there should be so many sacrifices. In traditional India, we could see it much. So Baba used to say, for Indian ladies, married ladies, it is a very good way to come on the spiritual path, this life. Because they have to sacrifice the whole of their life for their parents, sisters, brothers, in-laws, husband, and so, and so on, and so on. They have to sacrifice. If they cook delicious food, it will be of the taste of the other members of the family, but not of her taste. She may eat or she may not eat. She will serve to others first. And all this is done selflessly, out of love. This sacrifice, selflessness, love, these are the lessons taught by the married life. These things should be implemented in the married life. Then the married life will be happy and it will be useful for the going on a spiritual path. Anyway, so we were on to lead men. No? She has read up to benediction, all who know of them, right? No? So we have to start from to lead men. To lead do you men. Want, does someone else want to read or do you want me to continue? Anyone want to read? Okay, I'll continue and go on explaining whatever, wherever needed. To lead men and women to the heights of realization, we must help them to overcome fear and greed, anger and passion. These are the result of looking upon the self as a limited, separate, physical entity having a definite physical beginning and definite physical aim with interest apart from the rest of life and needing preservation and protection. We must cross the boundary of that limitless and we have to know that we are limitlessness. We must go towards the limitlessness, unlimited. We are really unlimited. But this boundary of limiting we must cross it. The self, in fact, is a limitless, invisible, sorry, indivisible spiritual essence, eternal in its nature and infinite in its resources. The greatest romance possible in life is to discover this eternal reality in the midst of infinite change. So beautiful. This is the greatest romance, Baba says, to find this eternity, to find this limitlessness, unlimitedness. Once one has experienced this, one sees oneself in everything that lives. One recognizes all of life as his life. Everybody's interest as his own. Once we achieve that unlimitedness, eternalness, we see I am in everyone. The fear of death, the desire for self-preservation, the urge to accumulate substance, the conflict of interest, 
the anger of thought and desires are gone. Once we achieve that God realization, all this will go. So Baba gives the answer to the first question. One is no longer bound by the habits of the past, no longer swayed by the hopes of the future. Because in God, there is no time, there is no space. When time comes, space comes, limit, li limit comes. But he is unlimited. Because he is unlimited, there is no such thing as space and time. Because he is unlimited, everlasting, eternal. One lives in and enjoys each present moment to the full. There is no greater romance in life than this adventure in realization. The God realization is an adventure. It's not an easy game. Baba says the spiritual path is full of thorns and stones and very hard road. It's not easy. Only a courageous can make this daring of walking on the spiritual path. It's not as easy as we think it. Mm -hmm. So Baba says this is the adventure. There is no better medium to portray it than the moving pictures. Mm -hmm. Plays which inspire those who see them to greater understanding, to own feeling, better lives, need not necessarily have anything to do with so-called religion. Greed, ritual, dogma, the conventional ideas of heaven and hell and sin are perversions of the truth and confuse and bewilder rather than clarifying and inspiring. So very important. Even that path, even the planes, one to seven planes, everything is a part of illusion. A real spirituality is best portrayed in stories of pure love, of selfless service, of truth realized and applied to the most humble circumstances of our daily lives, ring out into manifold expression through home and business school and college, studio and laboratory, evoking everywhere the highest joy, the purest love, the greatest power, producing everywhere a constant symphony of bliss. So beautiful. Everywhere, in every walk of our daily life, we have to see the sow the seeds of love. Give love and you will get love. We have to be loving to each one and everyone, every field of life. This is the highest practicality. To portray such circumstances on the screen will make people realize that the spiritual life is something to be lived, not talked about. And that it and it alone will produce the peace and love and harmony which we seek to establish as the constant rule of our lives. Only through love, good harmony, cooperation, we can produce peace and love. Thank you, Baba. Thank you all. Avatar Meher Baba Ki. And uh, any questions, any shares, Juhi, Indulata Gupta. I will like Indulata Gupta ji to sing Baba Arti and, and Dilnavas Damania. There is Dilnavas Damania. Uh, you people might not be knowing. Dilnavas is related to Satha family and Eraj family. And Dilu is a lovely lady. I will like her to say prayers and uh, Indulata Gupta to sing Baba Aati. And anyone wants to say anything before we proceed for prayer and Aati, Jai Baba. Mm -hmm.
This is lovely. It's a lovely talk. I'm so glad that uh, we're Thank you. This is great. Thank you. And thank you, all of you. Thank you, Baba. Mm. And if I fail, I'm so sorry. Any discussion, any questions? Jai Baba. Lovely couple. Jai Baba. <laughs> yeah. Shall we proceed for the prayer and aati? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Dilu, please, will you? Ah, uh, yeah, Dilu. She is she's Dilu. Yeah, yeah, she is Dilu and related to, you know, no, money auntie. So there is Satha family in Ahmednagar mm -hmm. and you might have, uh, you all know Erech uncle. So they are related to them. So uh, mm -hmm. please start with the prayer and then Indu Didi, please be ready for the Aarti. Avtar Mehe Baba. Mehe Baba Kimche. O oh, Parvadeka, the preserver and protector of all, you are without beginning and without end, none dear beyond comparison and none can measure you. You are without color, without expression, without form and without attributes, you unlimited and unforgettable, beyond imagination and conception, eternal and imperishable. Two indivisible and none can see you, but with eyes divine. You always were, you always are, and you always will be. You are everything, you are in everything, and you are beyond everything, and beyond You are in the throne, in the depths, you are manifest of all planes and beyond all planes. You are in the tree worlds and also beyond the tree worlds. You are imperceptible and independent. You are the creator, the lord of lords, the lower of all minds and hearts. You are omnipotent and omnipresent. You are knowledge infinite, power infinite, and bliss infinite. You are the ocean of knowledge, all knowing, infinitely knowing. The knower of the past, the, the present, present, and, and the, the future, and you are knowledge itself. You are all merciful and eternally benevolent. You are the soul of souls, the one with infinite attributes. You are the trinity of truth, knowledge, and bliss. You are the source of truth, the ocean of love. You are the ancient one, the highest of the high. You are Prabhu. And Parmeshwar, you are the beyond God and the beyond beyond God also. You are for Brahma, Allah, Ilahi, Yasban, Ahul Mazda, and God the Beloved. You are named Isa, the only one for worthy of worship. We depend, O God, most merciful for all our sins, for every thought that was false or unjust, or, or unclean, for every word spoken, that ought not, not to, to have been spoken, for every deed done, that ought not, not to have been, been done. done. We repent for every deed, and word, and thought, inspired by selfishness, and for every deed, and word, and thought, inspired by hatred. We repent most patient for, for every lustful thought, and every lustful action, for every lie, for all hypocrisy, for every promise given, but not fulfilled, and for all slander and backbiting. Most especially also, we repent for every action that has not revealed to others, for every word and deed that has given others pain, and for every that pain should be all of us. In your unbounded mercy, we ask you to forgive us, O oh God, for all, all these sins committed by us, and to forgive us for our constant failures to think and speak and act according to your will. Beloved God, help us all to love you more and more, and more and more, and still yet more, 
till we become worthy of union with you. And help us all to hold us to Baba's Dharma till the very end. Avtar Vihe Baba Kuchel. Jai Baba Hindu Didi. Indra Lata Vata. Jai Baba. Aarti Boli Hai Jai Baba. Avtar Vihe Baba Ki. O glorious Yuvanal ancient one, your face is the bright confidence of sun. I can the oil in the desert. Please, I you to me. The great creation is you are. To stand for the divine avatar, to compassion the three wills today, to stop this ignorance that life sustains, to inspire life for the balance of the time, of the world will that does be on the day, and the end you hold. In the middle of the night, the wheels of it is on the night. And this is my love, this is my heart. We stood with you, I have to come my heart. I accept them as you would a simple thing. And I know who is behind your mind. You are my self, I need to do in place. I beg your love to learn me to play. Tell you, be a holy, imperfect man. In my heart, it's your shining. Avtar Meher Baba Ki. Avtar Meher Baba Ki. जय बाबा जय बाबा जय बाबा जय बाबा जय Jai Baba, 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 J